Welcome to Menopause Monday. Today I'm talking about anxiety and menopause. Now, I think with menopause, a lot of us have had a life that's been, you know, relatively anxiety free. And then all of a sudden you can feel it creeping up on you. I don't know if that happened to you. It certainly happened to me. I'd be lying in bed at night and then for some weird reason, I'd just get this feeling of dread that would come over me. And it was really disconcerting. I'm really relieved that I knew what it was. I'm a psychotherapist. I specialize in anxiety. And so I knew that the sensations that I was getting in my body were anxiety related, but it, it was coming out of nowhere. And it was just, it was almost like my, the chemicals in my body were cheating how my brain was feeling because I feel I got the chemicals, the reaction to anxiety before I even, I, I wasn't really worrying about anything in particular. And I think that's the really strange thing about anxiety in menopause. Normally, anxiety is a result of chronic stress over long term, and eventually the body just becomes hyper sensitized to the hormones that are released when we're under stress. But I'm, you know, I, I live a very healthy life. I do the things I'm going to be recommending to you to do today. Um, but I could feel it coming on. And, and the, the one thing I did do to, to make a difference is accept it. So not resist it, just accept it was happening and then start some deep breathing. I'm going to go into all the sort of the details of, of why we get anxiety, why we get panic attacks, how we can overcome them. And in actual fact, you'll find that the, the ways of managing it are a lot easier than you might think they are. Um, stress tends to be, there's a difference between stress and anxiety. Stress tends to be externally aggravated. Anxiety tends to be more of an internal thing. So it's it's really is the, re, the result of chronic stress. So stress over a long period of time, which obviously when we're under stress, our body's releasing stress hormones. Those stress hormones are also more noticeable when we're going through the menopause because estrogen, uh, when, when before the menopause, estrogen um, helps to sort of balance out the amount of cortisol in our bodies. And I'm not going to go into the, like, the science of it right now, but just know that as you, one of the reasons you're probably feeling more stressed and you're feeling more anxious is due to the falling estrogen in your body uh, and progesterone, because progesterone helps to calm us. So there's, there, is a, there is a biological factor, but that when, we, when we're under stress for a long period of time, although those are from, they tend to be from external influences, we stress builds up within our body and the more we are the more our body is releasing cortisol the more we're becoming like hypersensitive to that release of cortisol and it can sort of start to develop this low grade fizzing i call it fizzing i think we all experience stress and anxiety slightly differently but for me it's like a fizz an uneasy fizz and that starts to build and build and build and actually once it starts to build quite significantly it can then ramp up very fast and then end up in something like a panic attack which is terrifying when it happens because you feel like you're having a heart attack and obviously you know you, you're you're flooding your body with even more stress hormones so it's really important to understand that a panic attack is it's just your body's response to long-term stress it's a sign that you need to do something about it um, like I said anxiety is 100% treatable um, unfortunately, most of us leave it too late before we actually get help for our anxiety. Um, when I see, I, I deal with a lot of teenagers and women in particular. I do have some male clients as well, but largely they're, they're female clients and or teenagers. And um, when, when I say to them, oh, you know, anxiety is treatable, don't worry, you know, we're, we're going to help you get over this. And it's just like, really, really, I'm not stuck with this for the rest of my life. And I think this is the most important thing for you to realize is that no, you're not stuck with it for the rest of your life. It is something that you can manage. And I will share how you, how you can manage that. It's, it's pretty easy to, to overcome it, even though you might think right now, there's absolutely no way, because you may have started feeling anxious, you may have started sleeping poorly, you may, then may have got to the stage where um, you don't want to be driven in a car by somebody else. Or you might have got to the stage where you actually don't want to drive the car yourself because you're afraid of having a panic attack. Or then you might think, I, I can't actually go anywhere except for in the car because I can't, I can't go on the train, I can't go on the plane or the boat because you're not in control of it. And then all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, I don't even know if I want to go outside today. And, and that's how it develops. And when you're at that stage, 
you do really need to go and seek professional help. Um, there is a lot that you can do yourself too, but ideally catch it before you get to that stage because it does have this tendency of um, almost imploding your world and you end up stuck inside, too afraid to do anything. And um, that is only going to serve to make everything that you're experiencing even worse. So know that it's treatable, know that there are things that you can do about it. And if you're one of those people who's sat hidden behind the curtains, phone a therapist, um, phone, message me. I, I will talk to you. I'll give you a free consultation, give you some tips to help you get started. Um, and then if you want to uh, take it a step further, we can have a chat about how we're gonna manage that for you. But don't feel trapped. You must never, ever feel trapped within your own body because anxiety has become such a, a major issue for you. Some people do have more of a tendency towards it, um, particularly if you have um, your main significant carers have been anxious throughout their lives. So you'll, you'll have picked up that behavior. It doesn't mean to say you can't change it and it doesn't mean to say you cannot ma manage it. It's also important to know that we cannot have a life without stress. Some aspects of stress are actually beneficial. It's called eustress, E-U stress. And um, that sort of motivates us to do things. So, you know, like a deadline's coming up and you're motivated to actually get that work done. We use stress is a little bit when we when we wake up in the morning, we get a, a rush of cortisol in our bodies. That's designed to get us out of bed and get us sort of actively on with our day. If you're having hot flushes, you probably find that when you wake up in the morning, the first thing that happens is you have a hot flush. That's as a result of that cortisol flooding your body, which is designed to get you out of bed. So certain stressors are positive. Um, the majority of them in our day and age are pretty negative and they do build up. Um, so, you know, I think a good way of possibly looking at anxiety at, at a more sort of basic level is if, you know, say you're invited to a friend's party and you're all excited to go, it's just like, yay, brilliant. And then you're just thinking, but what am I going to wear? What should I wear? Long dress, short dress, should I wear trousers? Uh, what, what, what if I wear something and people think, look at her dress sense. She's just like, what, is she blind? Um, you know, and then you're thinking, well, what if there's nobody there that I know? Or what if the people that I know are talking to themselves, you know, within their group and I don't really know how to go and chat to them and sort of, I don't, I don't want to sort of feel like I'm edging myself in. And, you know, what if the car breaks down on the way back or how am I going to get back? Blah, 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 blah. And you're starting already to start all this sort of ruminating about what could go wrong at the party. Whereas in actual fact, the party should be a fun event. It's a social gathering. It's something that we should all really, really enjoy. But that's just a sort of, I, I think, a lot of us go, we, we go through that, don't we? You know, you're invited to a party, particularly if you're single, you know, it's up to you to walk into that room of a lot of people that you don't know. And hopefully you can sort of strike a conversation with somebody that you have something in common with, um, apart from obviously the person who invited you to it. And um, it, it can create a lot of sort of underlying stress and anxiety within you. And that is just a typical situation. It could be at work, you know, you've got a deadline that you've got to meet and you're, you know you've got to take action on it, you know that you can do it, but then what if something goes wrong? What if you say that, what if you write the wrong thing? What if you're asked to then talk about it in front of the, you know, in the board meeting or something? And we, we have this habit of just seeing all the negative things that could go, go wrong. And one of the essentials of overcoming stress is actually recognizing that internal chatter, that negative internal chatter, and sort of, once you recognize it, you can actually stop yourself. And you can think, well, okay, well, what if, what, what if nobody's at the party who I know? Maybe I'll make some nice friends. And if the absolute worst happens, go home early. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It just, I went to, I remember going to a, a meeting once. My boss was ill or something. And um, it was this, it was like a um, personal development type session that he booked in for himself. And there were lots and lots of people there, quite successful business people. I was really young at the time. And, uh, and I sat there and I hid in the toilets in the break because I had no idea how to talk to anyone there. They were all like really chatty and really confident. And in those days, I was really, really shy. And I literally, there were, it was awful because there were only two ladies toilets. And I sat in the one cubicle for the entire break and waited until they'd all gone back down to sit at their chairs after the break had finished so that I could then go and sit in my seat, which unfortunately was near the front. So I had to walk past everyone to get to it. And it was just, ugh. 
it was horrible. So I want you to know it's not just you. And there are things that you can do to overcome it. Some of that's just maturity, if you're still young and you're listening to that. Some of it's just experience. And some of it is about just making ourselves do things that make us uncomfortable and getting over that fear. Um, I it was about four years ago when I hosted my own radio show. And it's the only, the only reason I, I hosted it is because I had committed to myself that, that like new year that I was going to say yes to every possible opportunity or positive opportunity. And, and so then all of a sudden this thing came along. It's just like, I've got to say yes, I've committed to doing that this year. And do you know, by just committing to saying yes, not to everything, no is a really important word too, but to things that I thought would, you know, help me grow personally, it forced, it forced my hand. So, and I did it and it was one of the best things I ever did because it got me out of that fear of talking to a large audience and, and, and also, I suppose, sharing, sharing information with people. Because I think when you're doing this sort of thing, you think, oh gosh, am I sharing the right kind of information? Is, is, you know, am, I, am I going to offend somebody inadvertently by saying something wrong, which I haven't thought about? And you know, is, does it sound right in my head, but does it sound wrong to somebody else? Like when you send a text message, you, know, you send a text message and it's in your mind, it's, there's no offense in it at all, or, or it might be funny, or it's just you know, the words that you use or how you would have talk, spoken that message. And then somebody receives it and they're thinking, but what does she mean by that? And they take offense and it's just, <sighs> but again, that, that sort of negative chatter would stop me doing this sort of thing. And hopefully I don't offend anyone, um, but you, know, you, you, cannot, you cannot live in fear of all the what ifs that might happen. Sometimes you just have to take the bull by the horns and go for it. So avoiding, trying to get out of that sort of recognizing your internal negative chatter is really, really important because then you can start to address it. You know why are you thinking these things and in actual fact if you go back uh, to my previous menopause monday and the one before that so that's a bit more about sort of brain fog and product productivity but there is um the the pre my pre my last menopause monday that i did the sort of end of december that is more of a workshop and it's there's um there's a downloadable asset that you can download for yourself and it's all about um how to recognize your fears and work out are they actually as bad as you think they are and actually if they do come true how do you best um work around them so if you want that either just send me a message or get the link from the previous menopause monday it should be in the link in the youtube beneath the, beneath the video and um and you can have you can get access to that because a lot of people found that really really helpful um, so essentially what happens when we have anxiety is we've got those stress hormones building up within us, within, within our body, and it's our fight and flight response being triggered, uh, you know, as it would normally do through natural evolution. So you know, if some, if an animal is chasing you, if a bear is chasing you, for instance, you're going to be under high stress and you're going to be thinking, well, you shouldn't run. <laughs> you're not supposed to run, are you, if a bear chases you, because they can run faster and they can climb trees. But, you know, you would be filled with that stress and that fear and all of your sort of your adrenaline and your cortisol would be going through your body. And the reason for that is it's designed to pump blood to your brain, pump blood to your muscles, so that if you need to fight or run, you can do, you can think sharper, your digestion system, your digestive system slows down. That's why chronic stress, long-term stress has a negative impact on your reproductive system as well, because obviously if you're trying to survive, you're not worried about sort of procreating at the time so it's really you know when you understand how the stress hormones work that might be why you get butterflies in your tummy too because it's um it's the, the blood moving away rapidly from your digestive system to power the muscles so that you can either fight and respond or run away from the the thing that's threatening uh threatening your safety um a panic attack does feel like um a heart attack it's it is the result of long-term stress but it's it's more anxiety related so it's, it's that internal um it's that internal expression really of your body's just saying you i need to do something differently i need help and recognizing your thoughts is incredibly important but also managing your breathing now breathing when i say to people in my therapy room you know i'm going to teach them deep breathing techniques and um it's going to help you prevent and either prevent a panic attack happening if you can feel one coming on or it's going to help you get out of one faster 
And they look at me and it's just like, no, breathing's not gonna work. And I promise you it will do because it stimulates the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve helps us to relax and we cannot be in panic and relaxed at the same time. Deep breathing also nourishes the body. It sort of sends the oxygen and the nutrients around in our bloodstream a lot more effectively, and it does calm us down. So um, there's, a, there's a few techniques. You can do like box breathing. So you can breathe in through your nose slowly for a count of four, hold it for a count of four, and breathe out slowly through your mouth for a count of four. And repeat that sort of five to 10 times, really relax, maybe lie down on the floor. I like to do it lying on my back with my feet up a, up a wall and just, you know doing that box breathing or you can do this the, there are other methods as well but you breathe in slowly through your nose for about sort of eight seconds and then you hold your breath for about 10 seconds and then you breathe it out slowly for 12 to 14 seconds so the or, or just hold you know breathe, breathe in through your nose for a few seconds hold it for a few seconds and then try and exhale through your mouth for the longest period of time and repeat that a few times through as well that will make a big big difference um, I have got uh, a Breathing for Health ebook. I will link to it below. If you'd like to get hold of that, you're more than welcome to have that. It's an ebook I made for my psychotherapy clients a little while ago. You can have access to that. Um, also, to help you manage your stress and just your reaction to stress and anxiety more effectively, sleep, prioritize sleep. Now, we all need different amounts of sleep. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you need a minimum of seven hours sleep a night you might get you might manage really well on five hours of sleep it's more about the quality rather than quantity you know if you're, you're somebody that lies in you, you sleep for sort of six hours and you lie in bed for a further three because you can't get up you just feel tired you know that that is not sleeping and that's not quality sleep once you're awake get up get active um, particularly if you find you can't go back to sleep again if you wake up feeling exhausted it could well be that you need to prioritize your your sleep hygiene. Um, again, I have a, a, a healthy sleeping ebook. You can, the, again, the link will be down below. So you're more than welcome to have that as well. That's all about the things that are gonna set you up for a productive night's sleep. So deep quality sleep. And there's a range of things you can do. One of the most obvious is just do not be working on your computer before you go to bed, because it's the, the blue light. I think even if you have those spectacles that block out the blue light, it's still sort of your brain and your eyes are still very, very active. Um, reading a book in bed with a low light is probably one of the best ways of setting yourself up for success but the, there's a range of various tips that I suggest and um, I you know if, if you're struggling with your sleep or you know somebody who's struggling with the, their sleep you know pass this on to them and then they can get that they can uh, download that healthy sleeping habits book um, also I think music is really important I know if I'm going out to, if I'm going to go out for dinner, I'm going out to a party, I put like, you know, fun music on. But if I'm feeling stressy, if I wake up in the night and I want to just listen to something relaxing so it takes me out of my head so I'm not constantly in my thoughts, listening to relaxing music really, really is beneficial. I think we all really, you know, it's a bit like perfume. Some of us like lo love certain perfumes and others of us think that they're absolutely revolting. And I think the same applies in music. But when you know what music you find relaxing, maybe get some of that lined up ready for when you're going to bed or if indeed if you wake up during the early hours and you can't go back to sleep just put the music on really low um just be careful you don't listen I, you probably wouldn't but i know somebody was electrocuted a while back because they they've got their earbuds in listening to their mobile phone in the bath and they fell asleep and the phone went into the bath and it electrocuted them um same thing if your phone is charging never ever put earbuds in um because again, somebody, there were two incidents a couple of years ago and something happened with the electricity circuit and they got electrocuted through the ear, earbuds listening to music in bed. I think one might, might set on fire actually as well. So, you know, make sure it's not plugged into the mains if you're gonna do that. Um, things, the music that I find really relaxing, uh, there's the Big Blue soundtrack, I know from the 1980s, but the dolphins in that is amazing and the whale sounds. Um, I like the Lumineers, um, Alt-J, um, that's um, music I got of my daughter, but it's, it's really, really relaxing. Um, I like the soundtrack to Gladiator, there's some beautiful pieces in that. Um, so, you know, ha have a think about the music that you find really, really relaxing. If you're feeling stressy and sad, I recommend watching funny films as well, or reading funny books. 
we forget to laugh. I think life has become so serious sometimes. And just to have a really good, good guffaw is it, it just floods your body with positive hormones. It's it's really, really energizing. Um, I've recently started uh, sea swimming in the morning. I never, ever, ever thought I would be swimming in the sea in a swimming costume in the middle of winter. But there is something so much fun about it. I, I go with my one of my sisters and a group of her friends and her husband and we have an absolute blast it's it's cold it's a challenge um every time i've done it i feel so invigorated afterwards do i like getting up really early to go no do i like the thought of getting into the freezing cold water when it's blowing a hoolie on the beach no do i like how i feel afterwards yes you bet and it's well worth having that that challenge because it's a personal challenge and I'm just about getting used to that cold water shock. It still takes my breath away. I'm still the last one in most of the time. Um, but I don't see that as an issue. I, I celebrate the fact that I get to the beach and I blooming well do it with them. And it just, for mental health, it is, abs it is just so bang on. But we have so much fun as well. We laugh, we scream. It's, it's just, it's, it's so invigorating on every level. Um, and, you know, if, if you're, if you you know, if you, you live near the coast or a river and you, you haven't got anyone immediately that you could go with, have a look on social media. D d try like wild swimming hashtags, sweet sea swimming hashtags. There are groups out there that you could easily join and maybe even start your own group. All I would say is never, ever swim alone. We sw sw swim in the sea and the beach that we swim at is very steep waves and it's quite rocky and it's incredibly strong never ever underestimate the power of the sea so if you're going to go in I would say go in at least three of you really uh, and take we go in the dark we, we swim before the sun comes up so um, waterproof torch is a, a real godsend as well particularly when your battery doesn't run out like mine did this morning but it doesn't matter the rest of them had some um, and sort of getting out into nature too is really important getting to the trees the trees actually give off the sorts of essential oils, you know, that they, as well as positive energy, just being surrounded by trees is in incredibly beneficial for our mental health. If you're surrounded by trees, you're probably going to be hearing the birds. So focus on listening to things outside of yourself rather than being busy and frantic inside your head. Really, you know, smell, smell the trees, smell, smell the floor. I mean, don't go sniffing it, but just be aware of the, the, the sensations around you. How does the breeze feel on your face? How, how does it smell? What birds can you hear? Well, can you hear the birds? Can you hear the wind rustling through the leaves on the trees? These things bring you back to almost like your origins. It's very, very grounding. And if you can focus on the things external to you, it just gives you a break from the frazzle that's going on inside of your head. We, we tend to implode when we're under chronic stress and anxiety. And what we need to do is focus away from the frazzle that's going inside. It can even be like um, watching a mountaineering program or something. I get so, for me personally, I love those sorts of programs. If out in the wild, people doing things or achieving great things, um, 14 Peaks, for instance, Nims Day, Day Nims Day. Um, I went with the last, last mountain not long ago, the River Runner. Um, my octopus teacher, if you've not watched that, it's just like, oh my goodness, it's beautiful. But if you like nature, watching things that are sharing somebody's either relationship with nature or an aspect of nature or sharing somebody's challenges and what they've managed to overcome it just gets you out of being in here and it's really really beneficial so I recommend you know maybe if you don't like reading before bed put something informative on like that something uplifting um and yeah, I, I think you'll find them really, really fascinating. It's, it, you'll learn a lot as well. And I think if you're learning, again, it's something outside of, of in here. It's, um, although learning is cerebral, it's, it's, it's taking you to other elements of, of, it's taking you to places you've not yet been because you're learning something new. And I think that's really, really important. Gratitude is a massive one. Um, I know the most, the most people who are negative I don't know how they do it, but they find the negatives in anything. If you're grateful for the fact that you're alive, we have clean air, cleanish air to breathe. We have access. Most of us have access to running water. Those are three incredible things to be grateful for. You, the fact that you're probably warm, 
the fact that you've got clothes to put on, the fact that you've got enough food in your cupboard this week that you don't have to go to the food bank, the fact that you're hopefully your, your family's healthy, the fact that you've, there's so much to be grateful for, whatever it might be, the fact that you've got eyes that see, the fact that you've got ears that hear. Just if you can wake up every day and give gratitude for a minimum of three things, and but really great, really real gratitude it already puts you into a positive mindset and end the day that way too. When I've turned off all my lights, it's the, one of the few things, well, I, 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 I'm grateful. I think of three, three things that I'm grateful for. And I always say a prayer of thanks to whoever, <laughs> but it, I, it's how I end my day. And actually normally when I'm saying my prayer of thanks, I drift off, to, off into sleep. So it's a really nice way of just that transition from the day to the night, even if it's a really frazzled day, Please do not think that I have days which are just like all zen and beautiful. They're not. They're really busy. And I go through the same stressors as everybody else and uh, probably a few more. And um, it, it's just managing them. It's being able to cope with them and setting up your life in such a way that it supports your mental health and doesn't take away from your mental health. Brings me on to people again. I know I was just about to talk about negative people. Um, social media gets a really bad rap. And what I would suggest is you, if you're getting a lot, of, if you use social media and you're getting a lot of negative types of people coming up on your feed, change what you are looking at and commenting on. So if you're sick of all the negativity out there, even if you just like you spend, you know, if you slow down your scroll and you read somebody's negative post, you know, maybe they're crying and you read it. And then you see somebody else and you, you're, you're being pulled to that type of post. The fact that you're spending seconds on that, that individual post, the algorithm knows that. And so it's going to think, oh, they, they, like, they like that sort of information. So we're going to send them more of it. If you want to change how that works, maybe check who you're following, but also um, start, you know, do hashtag gratitude hashtag motivational quotes, hashtag daily inspo, that sort of thing. That's just going to put more motivational and inspirational stuff coming into your feed. And then make sure you like it, maybe even leave a little comment or at least spend a few moments on it because the algorithm then will see that you're more focused on that sort of thing. And inspirational people, you know, whoever they may be to you, I'm sure we've all got people in mind that we think are inspiring maybe do a search on those people and then the algorithm will see that that's that's what you're searching for and it will put more of that into your feed and the negative stuff just scroll past don't engage on it and if it's too negative and if it's bringing you down unfollow or block or mute them it doesn't matter it's, it's your social media you, you don't have to be, be beholden or answer to anyone um, if you're worried that somebody's seen that you've unfollowed them you can just mute them it means that they, they don't know they've been muted. It just means they're not going to show up in your feed. But as far as they're aware, you're still following them. So that is another way to get around that politely if you need to. Um, and also your social circle externally. Again, when I'm talking about the swimming, we have so much fun doing that. And it really tops up my energy levels. And I wasn't going to go swimming tomorrow morning. I was going to leave it for a couple of days, but it's high tide tomorrow. It's going to be really fun. The wave should be quite big and um, it's, it, it should be really, really exhilarating swim. And um, my alarm is set and I'm ready to go. And I'm really, really excited about it. Not about getting in the sea, but getting out of just the fun of doing it together with my sister and her husband and, her, and, my, and their friends. Um, and just that feeling afterwards, it's so energizing. And yes, I do have to get up an hour and a half earlier to get to the beach and do it is it worth it <laughs> yes it is the other thing I would say is move your body um you probably get absolutely sick of me saying this I know of no one who regrets a workout everybody finishes exercise feeling more energized and feeling happier the reason for that is because it gobbles up stress hormones when we get sweaty and it also releases endorphins, so it releases feel-good hormones, but it also energizes us. We've got little mitochondria in our cell cells, those are like the little battery powerhouses, and that helps to energize, the exercise helps to energize those mitochondria so that you it gives you energy. It won't take your energy away. It might make you feel more calm, which is what you want, but it's not going to take your energy away. It will give you energy. It'll also obviously help we should all move we should all be moving so make sure you're doing exercise again if you need help getting started um let me know message me because I, that's something i'm i'm ninja at and it's, uh, i 
help a lot of particularly midlife ladies get started with the health and fitness or indeed carry on uh, the health and fitness in a way that helps them get results because I think a lot of us once we hit menopause it's just like oh what I used to do isn't working anymore so what do I do 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 I starve myself no um you know should I do more exercise no actually it's the contrary so um it's not scary as you think so if you're thinking yeah I do need to get started please let me know um I can I'll go over it in, in detail of what I can offer you and it's entirely up to you whether you want to go with it or not but at least then you've got a good idea um, what the exercises we do, they work out about 190 a week and you get access to masses and masses and masses of amazing workout programs. It's such, such good value uh, and nutritional support and community. It's it's brilliant. So, you know, please don't think it's something that's out of your uh, budget. One pound ninety a week or one dollar ninety a week. It's it's very very doable. Um, limit things that trigger you. So limit things like ca caffeine and alcohol. I know it's easy to get to the end of the day and think, oh, I'm just going to drink and I'll just pass out and I'll sleep and da 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 da. -da. But your sleep isn't good, and you probably really, in all honesty, don't feel that good about yourself in the morning when you wake up either. There's nothing wrong with a drink, a glass or two of wine in the evening. I have two glasses of wine nearly every night, um, but I don't get drunk and I'm not having so much that it's effect negatively affecting my sleep. You need, again, you need to work out what works for you best, um, but caffeine certainly will make you more antsy, uh, make you more stressy and um, just be, and obviously if you smoke, just stop um but things caffeine and alcohol and sugar are the three main issues sugar again it just on so many levels it has a neg negative impact no i would suggest following like the 80 20 rule so 80 percent is you're feeding your, your body with food as nutrition you're drinking a lot of water maybe herbal teas you know whatever you like um avoid the the juices because they're very very high in sugar um I think smoothies are not so bad because you've still got the fiber, so it's not such an issue. But when you take that fiber out, you just get a massive kick of sugar. You know, orange juice, yes, it's going to have more vitamins and minerals if, if it's freshly pressed. If it's out of a carton, it's been pasteurized. I bet it's gotten, it's probably as, as unhealthy as Coke. It certainly has nearly as much sugar as Coke. So just bear that in mind. A glass of orange juice, you might think it's healthy, but it's not. Eat the orange if you want orange juice instead or freshly press it yourself. But also be mindful of the fact if it's freshly pressed, you're still not going to get the fiber. So you're still going to get a massive sugar hit. Um, if you are if you love orange juice, just feel. I bet a few minutes later you have a hot flush. Same with coffee, same with wine or beer, alcohol. I bet you have, you have some of it and it gives you a hot flush a few minutes later. That's because of the cortisol spike in your body, raising the insulin levels. So just be mindful of that. On the point of being mindful, also, if you are really struggling with anxiety, keep a journal. So when you're feeling anxious, this is one of the things that I, I get my uh, clients to do as well. We, have, we do follow like an anxiety tracker. So when you're feeling anxious, think, think back a bit. How did you sleep that night? What have you just eaten? How did you eat and drink the day before? And has anything significant happened? So has, you know, has your boss phoned up with a deadline? Has somebody, have you spoken to somebody who you don't really get on with that really ruffles your feathers? Um, have you, are you thirsty? I know if I'm thirsty, it hot flush straight away. If I even just thinking about thirst, being thirsty makes me have a hot flush. I'm just so sensitive to that. So make sure you're staying hydrated. But the, the point of keeping a journal, just for like, one week, two weeks, you'll be able to look back and you'll probably see there's a pattern related to your anxiety. And when you can see that pattern, you can remove it or take steps to alleviate it in some way, shape or form. So I think journaling is incredibly important. And if you really, you know, if you're at that stage where the anxiety is becoming crushing, start that tracker, start tracking it. Um, you, it will reveal things to you that you probably weren't already aware of and ideally talk to somebody because if it's getting to that stage yeah if, if it were me and I was feeling like that I, I would make I would commit to getting outside in nature every single day I would commit to exercise in a gentle format to begin with uh, I would look at getting on point with my food 
I'd drink more water, um, I'd prioritize my sleep. And I, I know that sleep can be hard if you're stressed and you're anxious, um, but do what you can to prioritize your sleep. And when you're taking care of the other aspects, the sleep will gradually improve as well and become really aware of your internal chatter as well as the people that you're surrounding yourself with. Um, it's absolutely true. If you're, if you're surrounding yourself with uplifting people, it has a really positive impact on you. When you're surrounding yourself by negative people, even though you don't necessarily agree, agree with how what they're saying and how they behave in life, that whole energetic thing just pushes you down and you'll find yourself getting cross. I was recently with somebody who's quite negative and I found myself getting so frustrated with this very negative individual. Um, and sometimes you just kind of have to remove yourself if you can, or if not, just understand it's the individ that individual that's bringing you down. So spend the least amount of time with those people as possible. Um, settle for done over perfection. That's my last tip. The, we, well, I don't know, I'm a recovering perfectionist. It's honestly, I, my younger years, it was, I don't know, I, I, I had to have everything sparkling clean, well organized, really tidy, and I've learned to be scruffy and I've learned to not let it bother me. Like, um, like for instance, giving this Menopause Monday. When I first started doing these, I would literally, I'd be bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, and I'd be trying to think, oh my God, I'd almost learn it verbatim because I didn't want to say the wrong thing. I didn't want to miss something out that was crucially important. Now it's just like, I know what I'm talking about. And I do, I sometimes do have a few bullet points to keep me on track so I don't miss anything crucial out. Um, but on the whole, it's just like, just do it. The, the, if you if you're if you want if there's something you want to do but you're afraid to start just do it was it imperfect action is better than perfect inaction and at the end of the day if you're afraid of not having it perfect you'll never take action because perfection doesn't exist so just do it and be really messy when I was learning foreign languages I remember the teachers they always always used to say just talk just talk French, just talk German, talk Spanish, whatever your language is, just talk. Because the more you talk, the more you'll practice. And then the more, if, if you're talking to uh, somebody in another language, they're going to be talking back to you. And okay, you might not understand exactly what they're saying, but eventually you'll get used to it. And it, it was absolutely true. The more you practice it, yeah, you're going to make a few mistakes to begin with, but so what? So what? It doesn't matter. So unless like you're a brain surgeon or a heart surgeon, in which case, Perhaps perfection's a good good idea, um, but I think on normal everyday normal life we hold ourselves back, and we shouldn't. We should just get on and do it. Um, in fact, what I will do, I'll also put the link to the workshop and the workbook um, Menopause Monday that I did last time. I know I mentioned you could go back and find it, but I will link to that as well uh, with the the ebooks that you can have if you want those. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. In concluding, just if you are getting to that stage where you've either had a panic attack or you can feel the anxiety creeping up on you and you 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 don't think you're able to overcome it yourself, <clears throat> get help. Absolutely get help. Talk to someone. A lot of therapists offer a free consultation. I do. Um, I think it's really important that you have a good rapport with the person that you're working with. Um, and yeah, take it from there. I mean, I use hypnotherapy a lot with my anxiety clients. It's part and parcel of depending on where, where their anxiety, you know, what's caused it and their, their sort of history. But uh, hypnotherapy is just such a powerful tool and it, it works really well because it deals with the subconscious. So it's, also, it's getting under the hood and dealing with it at root level rather than, um, you know, like following the tips that I've suggested to you today. I would also suggest do those two, but with hypnotherapy sort of coming in at the back door, it's such a powerful tool and it works really, really well with anxiety. So don't feel stuck. It is 100% treatable. Um, you may need to get help, but I promise you it'll be worth getting that help. So um, I'll leave you on that and hope you have a great week. Happy New Year. Can't believe it's happened already. Uh, stay safe and I'll talk to you soon.